The San Andreas Fault is a geological formation in California that is still active today. It runs roughly 800 miles through California, from the Salton Sea in the south to Cape Mendocino in the north. The San Andreas Fault has been around for millions of years and is the boundary between the Pacific and North American tectonic plates. The fault is responsible for numerous earthquakes in the region, some of which have been very destructive. The most famous earthquake associated with the San Andreas Fault occurred in 1906, when a magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck San Francisco, resulting in widespread destruction and many fatalities. The fault continues to produce smaller earthquakes on a regular basis, and it is considered a significant seismic hazard in California. However, according to scientists, the next San Andreas disaster may be tame in comparison to Hollywood's imaginations. Movies have often been predictors of the future disasters, such as the San Andreas, which are notorious for their outrageous carnage and heroics. But in real life, all that has ever happened, and yet to multiply and happen again like never before. Earthquakes of a higher magnitude are estimated to occur every after 200 years. This was confirmed when one earthquake hit San Francisco in the early 1906, causing rampant damage of 80% of the city and death of over 3,000 people. According to geologists, these are the intervals of large earthquakes on Parkfield part of San Andreas Fault, from 1857 to 1901, then 1922 to 1934, to 1966 in the same interval as you see. Several signs point to a chance that history might repeat itself, and such an earthquake might reoccur in the next couple of decades. But what really brings about all this? What is a fault? In geology, a fault is a fracture or break in the Earth's crust where the two sides have moved relative to each other. Faults are the result of tectonic forces that cause the Earth's crust to deform and undergo stress. When the stress on the crust exceeds the strength of the rock, it will eventually rupture, forming a fault. The movement along the fault can be either vertical or horizontal and can occur in a sudden and violent manner, resulting in earthquakes. Faults can be very large, such as the San Andreas Fault that moves more than 800 miles, making it the largest fault line in the whole world. It extends through California for then 800 miles beyond San Francisco and almost as far as San Diego. In addition, the movement along a fault can cause earthquakes, but over time, the fault can also create other geologic features. One common feature that can form after a fault is a fault scarp, which is a small cliff or steep slope that forms where one side of the fault has been uplifted relative to the other side. This can happen when the two sides of the fault move in opposite directions, with one side moving up and the other side moving down. Another feature that can form after a fault is a fault block mountain range. This occurs when the movement along a fault causes a large section of the crust to uplift and form a mountain range. Examples of this type of mountain range include the Sierra Nevada in California and the Tetons in Wyoming. In some cases, faults can also create valleys or basins. This can occur when the movement along a fault causes one side to drop down relative to the other side, creating a depression in the Earth's surface. Examples of this type of feature include the Death Valley Basin in California and the Rift Valley in East Africa. The formation of features after a fault depends on the type of fault, the direction and magnitude of movement along the fault, and the geologic setting in which the fault is located. Check out this other video on how the fault in East Africa is leading to the whole continents splitting into two halves. Well, for the San Andreas Fault, we all don't know what will actually happen since it's still an active process so anything can happen. Although researchers do have some hints, it is very difficult to predict in advance when an earthquake might occur. This was demonstrated when the earthquake that followed the one in 1904 occurred all the way in 2004. That's approximately a century. According to a 2006 study that was published in Nature, the San Andreas Fault has achieved a sufficient stress level for 7 plus magnitude earthquakes. The southern portion of the fault in the region of Los Angeles is where the risk is most concentrated. In fact, an earthquake in the Los Angeles may be overdue according to the study. Scientists decided to look even further, centuries back to get clues based on the heating of the Earth's crust. A new project was formed called the San Andreas Fault Observatory Project, 
where researchers examined and discover more about the all process. The researchers discovered a region where the biomarkers indicated warmth approximately 1.9 miles deep in coal. The journal Geology furthermore revealed that the area of the fault may have been the site of more than 100 earthquakes. According to the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center, Thomas Jordan, says that the earthquake is very likely to hit soon because the fault is examined more and appears locked, loaded, and ready to go. According to Rick Asta, professor of geophysics and department head at Colorado University states that there are many realistic scenarios for major earthquakes up and down the San Andreas Fault Zone. Geologically speaking, the San Andreas Fault System is proven to very large earthquakes, but what precautions should be done to reduce on the earthquake damages? No one can control this, but we can do something. Well, officials in the Northwest are getting started. Portland is currently building all new structures to the earthquake standards, which is okay. But individually, a few people care about this. There are so many ways one should get ready of such circumstances before it actually hits you in the face. Create an emergency kit. Put together an emergency kit that includes essential items such as non-perishable food, water, a first aid kit, flashlights, and extra batteries. You can also include important documents such as passports, identification, and insurance papers. Secure heavy items such as bookcases, mirrors, and electronics to the walls or floor to prevent them from falling during an earthquake. Learn about earthquake risks in your area. Find out about earthquake risks in your area and how to protect yourself. Lastly, contact your local emergency management office or visit the Federal Emergency Management Agency. By taking these baby steps, you can better prepare yourself and your family for an earthquake and reduce the risks of injury and property damage. Let me know your thoughts and observations in the comments below. Check out this other video on how Africa is also going to split apart due to nature. See you in the next one.